So, AMD look as though they've hit it out of the park with the 9070 XT and hopefully the 9070, so we'll, we're getting to that one now. But yeah, reviews yesterday were universally positive from based on what I saw anyway, and reception from gamers looked to be even better. So, all AMD has to do now is execute on the next phase of this plan, and that is to deliver these GPUs into the hands of gamers, so I suppose you guys, at the prices you're expecting based on AMD's own MSRP claims. And this is something we'll hopefully see happen over the next few days. Before then though, we need to look at the cheaper option, the RX 9070, so the non-XT model, which quite oddly, AMD has positioned at $550 US. So the same alleged MSRP as the RTX 5070. Now the 9070 should generally be faster than the 5070 based on what we saw from the XT version. And as a bonus, it does pack more VRAM the minimum amount of VRAM that we deem acceptable at this price point. So 16 gigabytes, whereas the RTX 5070 is hamstrung by a piddly 12 gigabyte VRAM buffer, which is less than ideal if you want to take advantage of all those heavily marketed RTX features like frame generation and ray tracing. As we see it though, the RTX 5070 is not really an issue for the RX 9070, rather the issue is bigger brother, the XT model, which is fetching just $50 US more. Well, that is of course according to the MSRP. This means the 9070 is offering a mere 8% discount, which on its own doesn't really mean too much, I suppose. But if we look at the specs, we see that it packs 13% fewer cores and texture mapping units. So the 9070 will almost certainly end up being a bigger downgrade than the price suggests. Anyway, we have a lot of data to go over, but before we do, Here's a look at how the AIB models that we have on hand for testing perform. Now for all of our testing, I use the Sapphire Pure RX 9070, but I also have the PowerColor Hellhound and XFX Quicksilver. So let's see how they all compare. The Hellhound saw a GPU junction temperature of 59 degrees, while the Quicksilver was a degree cooler at 58 degrees, and then the Pure quite a bit cooler at just 53 degrees. That said, when looking at the hotspot temperatures, the Quicksilver was the coolest model at 69 degrees, then the Pure at 71 degrees, while the Hellhound hit 76 degrees, which is still a very cool hotspot temperature. All three models saw a peak memory temperature of 86 degrees, with the VRM temps below 70 degrees, so there's no issues there. The Hellhound operated with the lowest fan speed of just 930 RPM, but the Pure and Quicksilver were also quiet with fan speeds of between 1000 and 1100 RPM. Now the Hellhound clocked the lowest, averaging 2,745 megahertz in our test, and this saw the Pure clock 4% higher on average at 2,840 megahertz, and the Quicksilver was very similar at 2,810 megahertz. So great results there for all three models. Now it's time to get into the FPS data. First up, let's take a look at performance in Marvel Rivals. The 9070 is basically on par with the 5070 at 1440p, rendering at 77 FPS on average, and this made it 13% slower than the 9070 XT and 7% slower than the 7900 XT. Then when upping the resolution to 4K, the 9070 slips behind the 5070 by a 7% margin, rendering just 41 FPS on average, the same performance as the old RTX 3080, and then just 5% faster than the 7900 GRE. Next up we have Stalker 2, and here the 9070 is just 5% slower than the 9070 XT at 1440p, and this allowed it to nudge ahead of the RTX 5070 by a slim 6% margin. However, jumping up to 4K really does hurt the 9070, as here it becomes 18% slower than the XT version, rendering just 32 FPS on average to roughly match the RTX 5070. Now, as we saw previously, these new RDNA 4 GPUs don't work particularly well in Counter-Strike 2, and other reviewers such as DeBauer have confirmed this. The 9070, it's not particularly impressive at 1440p, and although it was just 6% slower than the XT version, that also did make it 7% slower than the RTX 5070. Now, increasing the resolution to 4K it didn't really help. The 9070 ends up being 10% slower than the 5070 here, and then 8% slower than the 9070 XT. Now the Space Marine 2 performance is quite impressive. Here the 9070 was just 5% slower than the XT version, allowing it to match the likes of the RTX 4070 Super, 7900 XT, and very oddly, the RTX 5080. 
For whatever reason, these new Blackwell GPUs suck in this title, and this is why the 9070 is seen to be 24% faster than the RTX 5070. Things get even worse for the Blackwell GPUs at 4K. Here the 9070 is 57% faster than the 5070, so something is clearly wrong here, and Nvidia will have to fix this at the driver level, I imagine. And I should note, in the lighter sections of the game, the Blackwell GPUs seem to perform okay, but in the very demanding horde battle where we test, they just fall in a heap. The frame rate halves as soon as we kick off the horde battle. So I'm not sure what's happening there that cripples the Blackwell GPUs, but again, something Nvidia is going to have to look at and probably fix with an updated driver. Next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and this is a title where the Radeon GPUs have always performed well, as long as ray tracing isn't enabled, of course. At 1440p, the 9070 was 10% slower than the XT version, but 15% faster than the RTX 5070, so a very strong win here. Then at 4K, that margin is extended to 20%, making the 9070 comfortably faster than the RTX 5070. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is an AMD favourite, and here we see why. At 1440p, the 9070 is just 8% slower than the 9070 XT, but more crucially, 40% faster than the RTX 5070. I know this sort of result doesn't quite seem possible, but I assure you the data is accurate. Then at 4K, the 9070 trails the XT version by a 10% margin, but despite that manages to lead the 5070 by a whopping 44% margin. The 9070 was just 7% slower than the XT version in Dragon Age The Valguard, and this saw it match the RTX 5070 at 1440p with 79 FPS. Jumping up to 4K, still saw the 5070 and 9070 neck and neck, this time with 53 FPS, making both 7% slower than the 9070 XT. Interestingly, testing Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p saw the 9070 coming in just 2% slower than the 9070 XT, and that allowed it to beat the RTX 5070 by a 7% margin. And then at 4K, it does slip to an 8% margin relative to the 9070 XT, but also managed to beat the 5070 by a rather large 21% margin. Now, the last game we're going to look at the individual results for is The Last of Us Part 1, though we do have some ray tracing data to go over in a moment. At 1440p, the 9070 is 15% slower than the 9070 XT, which saw it match the RTX 5070 exactly. Then at 4K, it was 23% slower than the XT version, again matching the 5070, this time with 48 FPS. Okay, so across the 18 games used for testing, the 9070 was on average 8% slower than the XT version, so the 9070 XT. So not bad at all. That said, it was also just 4% faster than the RTX 5070 for mostly raster-based gaming, so I'm not exactly sure if that'll be enough, but we'll work that out shortly. Then at 4K, it ends up 12% slower than the 9070 XT, which is bad given that it's only 8% cheaper, at least based on the MSRP. It was also 8% faster than the RTX 5070, which is a little bit better, not a significant win given that they both should cost $550 US. Now when it comes to power consumption, the 9070 consumes anywhere from 15 to 23% less power than the 9070 XT in our testing, so it's certainly a more efficient configuration. When compared to the RTX 5070, consumption can be anywhere from a few extra watts to an additional 20% power draw. A bad example was seen in Starfield, where the 9070 consumed 20% more power than the 5070 for a mere 6% performance boost. Now, time for some ray tracing performance, and we'll start with Metro Exodus at 1440p. Here the 9070 was 15% slower than the XT version, which placed it right alongside the RTX 5070, so not a bad result really. Then at 4K, it did end up being 15% slower than the XT model, and 6% slower than the 5070, so not too bad, and certainly much more competitive than the previous generation. Previously, we saw in the 9070 XT review that these new RDNA 4 GPUs can't quite cut it in Alan Wake 2 using the high RT preset. So obviously the 9070, it's not going to work. Just 31 FPS on average, and although that made it 21% slower than the RTX 5070, it's worth noting that the performance here also sucked with just 39 FPS. As a result, 4K is out of the question, but because we have the data, I might as well just show it to you for those that are interested. 
Next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077 using the Ultra Ray Tracing preset with quality upscaling at 1440p. And here the 9070 is 16% slower than the XT version, roughly matching the RTX 5070 with 57 FPS. Then at 4K, the 9070 rendered 31 FPS on average, making it 14% slower than the 9070 XT. And this once again saw it match the RTX 5070. Moving on to Spider-Man Remastered, the 1440p results are mostly CPU limited, and as a result, the 9070 is able to match the 9070 XT along with the RTX 5070. Then if we increase the resolution to 4K, this does reduce the CPU bottleneck, and now the 9070 is 7% slower than the XT version, but also 10% faster than the RTX 5070, so a good win here for AMD. Now it did trail the 5070 and Dying Light 2, at 1440p, coming in 6% slower and then 11% slower than the 9070 XT. Still that did make it 10% faster than the 7900 XT. Then at 4K it slipped behind the XT model by a 13% margin and that also meant it was 11% slower than the RTX 5070. Sadly the new RDNA 4 GPUs aren't that impressive in Black Myth Wukong with the very high ray tracing preset enabled. And while the RTX 5070 is 46 FPS at 1440p with upscaling enabled is hardly impressive, it is a lot better than the 25 FPS the 9070 spitting out. And that being the case, we hardly need to go over the 4K upscaled data, but here it is anyway for those of you interested. And lastly, we have Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, which we believe needs to be played using the full RT settings for a transformative experience. So in that case, RT isn't really worth using on either the 9070 or 5070 in this title. For that, you'd want a 5080 or 5090, which will no doubt make NVIDIA very happy. Now across the six games tested for ray tracing performance, the 9070 came in 13% slower than the 9070 XT and 16% slower than the RTX 5070. So not bad for a Radeon GPU, and it also means that the 9070 is 9% faster than the 7900 XTX, the previous generation flagship, so that's a great result. The 4K upscale data isn't that relevant, given the 9070 and 5070 were often unable to deliver acceptable performance with ray tracing enabled, but for those interested, the 9070 was 28% slower than the 5070 here. Okay, so time for the cost per frame data, and please note, I've had time to add the Space Marine 2 and Black Ops 6 results, meaning this data is based on an 18 game average. Both titles are very positive for AMD, though I expect at some point Nvidia will address the issues we're seeing in Space Marine 2, though so far I've not heard anything. Anyway, this data shows that the 9070 XT is offering the best value, making the non-XT version 4% worse in terms of cost per frame value, though it is still 8% better value than the RTX 5070. So while the 9070 is probably better value overall when compared to the very poor RTX 5070, it still doesn't make sense and really should be priced at $500 US. Now when compared to the retail pricing from last year, the 9070 series still slots in quite favorably, offering the best value. But again, the 9070's $550 US MSRP doesn't really make sense relative to the 9070 XT, so you'd probably just get the XT version at those prices. So there you have it. Now the most obvious conclusion to make here is that if available at the MSRP, you really should just ignore this model, the RX 9070, and instead get the XT version, because it is offering slightly better value in terms of cost per frame. It's about, well, it's $50 more, you're getting, so that's a 9% price hike, but you're getting 14% better performance on average. So that's it really. Uh, everything else is the same, same VRAM, all that good stuff. So therefore we recommend, again, if the $550 and $600 US MSRPs are honored, or you can get models at that price, then just get the XT. It's, it's gonna be better value. Now, of course, we're yet to see how pricing and availability all plays out, so it's difficult to make any solid conclusions about value just yet. But we do know supply of these RX 9070 series GPUs is very strong, but we're also hearing a lot of wiring chatter about availability of MSRP models. So we'll be sure to revisit this subject next week with a big GPU pricing update video, and of course, beyond that, we will continue to monitor this closely. As it stands right now, though, the RX 9070 is very odd. 
though not unusually so for AMD I'm afraid to say. For example, last generation they priced the 7900 XT at just $100 US below the 7900 XTX, which was a 10% discount, but it packed 17% less VRAM and was 17% slower to boot. Therefore it made no sense and as a result it was met with largely negative reviews. But that didn't deter AMD. They went on to repeat that play with the 7800 XT and 7700 XT, making the latter product just 10% cheaper despite packing 25% less VRAM and 16% weaker performance. Again resulting in mostly negative reviews, this time for the 7700 XT. So this is a repeat strategy from AMD. A bold strategy you could say but it's one they like to employ, despite no one outside of AMD understanding the game plan. And in fact, it kind of seems like a lot of people at AMD don't get it either. Now, if we ignore the obvious fact that you should just buy the 9070 XT instead, so let's pretend that option doesn't exist at all, making this a straight RX 9070 versus RTX 5070 battle, under those conditions, who wins? Well in terms of value, the RX 9070 is offering 8% better cost per frame value for mostly raster performance, but when it comes to heavy or rather transformative ray tracing performance, the 5070 was on average 16% faster, and therefore is the better value option for RT, though that is assuming that you don't run over the 12GB VRAM buffer, as we did in Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. You really have to question how much value the RT performance of the RTX 5070 adds, given the memory issues which almost certainly will become a bigger issue moving forward. You could certainly argue, at least right now, that RT is a win for the RTX 5070, with DLSS 4 upscaling being another win, though based on what I've seen so far FSR 4 looks to be very good, and certainly good enough. For me though, I personally believe the RX 9070 is the better product, simply because it is generally faster and with 16GB of VRAM it should age better over the next 3-4 to four years. But ultimately, as it stands right now, doesn't really matter as you wouldn't buy either product at the proposed MSRP, so you'd just get the 9070 XT and call it a day. And Speaking of which, I'm going to call it a day, that's the end of my RX 9070 review. Um, let me know what you think about this product, I guess the review as well, if you have any comments or concerns, drop them below. But yeah, let me know what you think about the RX 9070 and was it a bit weird for AMD to make it only $50 cheaper? It's probably going to lead to more negative reviews um, than otherwise, so it seems like a bit of a miscalculation there, just should have released it at $500 I think and then let the chips fall where they may. Anyway, again, I want to hear your feedback, so make sure you drop that below and I'll read it. Otherwise, we have the join button, Patreon. Don't know why I'm doing lots of finger things here. There's only, there's only two things. Uh, I'm just tired, I guess. It's been a busy week. Um, so yeah, a lot of, lot of work went into all of this content. We had three GPU reviews in one week, and we're also working on a CPU review for next week. So plenty happening here. Anyway, I'm rambling. I really should wrap this up. So I'm your host, Steve. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.